yeah so th this grave here we're looking at is, is 1139 this guy James McMahon and what you see with a huge amount of the graves at Andersonville relating to the Irish is, is that their names are spelt wrong almost uh, it's almost ubiquitous among them this guy's name is actually James McMahon and often it preserves Irish accents and the way they pronounce it uh, because people are spelling things phonetically the way they hear them particularly if they're not familiar with Ireland um, but he served in the 73rd Pennsylvania Infantry and what's particularly interesting about him really is what happens to his widow after the war as a consequence of his death if we go to the 1860 census so just before the war he's living with his wife Annie who's also Irish in the 17th Ward of Philadelphia he worked as a weaver They'd married there in 1850 and they had six young children um, by the time he went off to war. The youngest Mary Jane was just born when he enlists in 1861. Um, he served in the 11th Corps which became an infamous corps who are wrongly blamed for things at Chancellorsville uh, and Gettysburg, largely German corps. He survived all of them but was captured at Missionary Ridge, um, which you probably know, um, in November 1863 and he dies here. But um, what's interesting about him particularly is his wife Annie. Um, she gets news of his fate by the end of 1864. So she has six young children. Her oldest is 13 years old. The youngest is three. She needs to get a pension quick or there's going to be um, economic disaster for her. Um, so she gets a lot of other Irish people to give affidavits and everything. But what happens to her as the years go on is that she develops a chronic alcoholism problem and at least other members of her family trying to, to get it sorted out. So we have this in 1868. Dear sir, you would confer a favour on the undersigned if you would retain for some yet time yet the pension of Anne McMahon. She is a drunken, disorderly character and takes no care of herself or children. You will therefore retain it until you hear from me through her or Aunt Mrs. Mallon. A very worthy woman who has charge of her children. By complying, you must oblige your humble servant. Um, so they're trying to get the pension off her so that the children will get some money so that they won't go unsupported. Um, this is her aunt giving a description of her um, shortly after. This. She said, Anne has become a perfectly abandoned character and is drunk whenever she can get a cent to buy liquor with. She does not support any one of the children but has pawned everything she could get hold of and Mary fears she has passed any reformation. If she draws her own pension on the 4th of September, she will spend the whole of it for drink and none of it would be devoted either to the children or to buy any requisite comfort for herself. But what's particularly interesting about Anne is the fact that she manages to actually reform herself so she can keep her children. Um, and so shortly afterwards, her aunt writes again to the Pension Bureau and says that Anne has every appearance of having reformed and she believes she is going to be a better woman and hereafter will take proper care of her children. She has entirely abstained from drink for a time and has taken a house and put her children in it and has promised an entire reformation. So because of that, um, she was able to get her pension restored and get her children back under her own care. But that's some of the consequences of people dying here. And it's what it does to, to the wives and the kids left behind.